Now that the Google Pixel 9 has satellite SOS, how does it stack up to the iPhone that has satellite SOS? The iPhone uses satellites that are hundreds of feet above the surface of the Earth. The Pixel uses satellites that are thousands of feet above the Earth. Does it matter? Does it make a difference? How different is the experience? How do they stack up against a Garmin inReach? How do they work in the open like this? And how do they work in Slot Canyon? We will answer all of those questions in this video. First, we'll test the Android. I got clear blue skies, nothing between me and the satellites except for air and space. All right, to start this, we're going to go into settings and then safety and emergency, and then satellite SOS, and then try a demo. And it tells you what to expect during the process. Part of this is going to be answering a questionnaire in real life that you know tells you a little bit about what your situation is. This is also on Android 15, just so you know, but it's asking us to turn off the uh, cellular connection just like it does on the iPhone, which I'll show you in a second as well. All right, here's how this works. We have to align the dot within the circle. Now this is trying to connect with a geostationary satellite. So that's a satellite that's always in the same place above the Earth's surface, uh, over 22,000 miles or so above. It's asking me to calibrate my compass so that I have the right place. But once we get it locked on, unlike the iPhone, we don't have to move it around. It should just stay there. Give it a second. It's trying to get a signal here connecting and it's going to pop on any second now there we go now we can just keep it here as long as we keep it in the same spot it is connected to the satellite it is sending the message that we originally did and there it goes it went through and we can respond to it and it will send it back you can see i'm moving the phone so the dot is moving within the circle there's that little window up top where it's telling us uh, our connection status while we have the chat window and you can see I move it around it goes a little haywire but I still do have a connection here and that's a good thing this is all done through a service called Skylo that's handling the connection to the satellite and I did confirm with them that this is using a geostationary satellite now the iPhone's very similar we're going to go to settings emergency SOS go to all the way to the bottom and you'll see you can do a demo of SOS via satellite it's going to give us some information on what to expect. There will be a questionnaire tier two if there is a real emergency. We have to turn off our cellular to make it work. And what's doing here is this is using low Earth orbit satellites that are constantly moving around the Earth. They're not in a geostationary orbit. So it's getting our position. It knows where the satellites are because it downloads that stuff into the device in the background. And now it's asking us to point the device, point the antenna at where it thinks the satellite is. And there we go. We are connected. It's doing a, a send right now, or it's trying to. And just like the Android up top, uh, if you're not familiar with this, it does have that little box that gives us a status of the connection and asks us to point it, keep it pointed at the satellite. And the satellite will be moving. So the expectation is you'll move, it, move your hand or your body around to keep that aligned. And there's a little progress bar, which the Android doesn't have. I don't know if it's real on the Apple, uh, but it, it makes you think something's happening. But there we go. Very similar to the Android experience. Now let's compare it to how long it takes on the Garmin inReach Mini 2. This is using low Earth orbit satellites, Iridium, which has worldwide coverage. And you can see I sent a message there. You can see that little spinning, uh, that little spinner right there. That means that it's trying to send it. Unlike the other devices, the antenna on this uh, should just work as long as it's pointed up. But it does take a little bit longer to go out and get a message back in general not always the case the conditions change and i have used a garment in reach that has not worked and conditions that were pretty favorable so it's always a bit of a crapshoot when talking to a satellite you're not guaranteed of anything and uh, just a little bit slower than what we get on the other ones and guess what? There's actually another Android phone that does satellite communications. It actually uses the Skylo network as well. There are other satellite phones in China, but this is the only one I know about here in the States. It's Yuli Phone Armor 23 Ultra. I've had it for a few months. I tested it in the Grand Canyon. It worked great. But since then, it's been hit or miss. It uses Skylo, like I mentioned, with the same geostationary satellites. You buy a plan through a company called Bullet. The plans are pretty reasonable. It does SOS. It also does non-SOS text messages, which the Pixel 9 doesn't do right now. I'd expect that comes in sometime in the future. But you can send text back and forth via satellite on this phone. 
Unfortunately, today, even though I was in these clear blue skies using the exact same satellite network that the Pixel 9 was, I could not get a connection. It tells you a little bit about what goes into not only the chipset and the backbone of these satellite systems, but also the antenna and the way that the phone works and the software in the phone to make this all work pretty seamlessly. Uh, unfortunately, the Yuli phone just didn't even work today. All right, so let's challenge these devices a little bit more. I'm at Annie's Canyon Trail, which is in the San Diego area. It's a little slot canyon. Let's try it from the mouth of the canyon, which is still pretty challenging. You can see there are high walls on either side of me. Let's see how they fare here. Let's start off with a new guy, the Pixel 9. You could see I have to turn it again to line it up, but it is working. I do get the green. I think it takes a smidgen longer than the other one, but it does connect and I am able to use it and get the signal out. After the strong performance from the Pixel, I thought the iPhone would just be a formality, but it struggled to connect to a satellite. It had me moving around, pointing the phone in different directions, and it did not connect here at the mouth of the canyon. Now, this could be a practical demonstration of the difference between connecting with a low Earth orbit satellite from Global Star, one that's moving around the Earth constantly, versus a geostationary satellite, one that's much higher and just sitting above the Earth, but it didn't work. Let's go on to the inReach. Given what just happened with the iPhone, I was interested to see what happened with the inReach because it also uses low Earth orbit satellites from Iridium. It's a different constellation, different company. There are more Iridium satellites than there are Global Star satellites, but testing it, it took, you know, took the normal sort of longer amount of time, but the satellite message did eventually go out and it did work here at the mouth of the canyon. I decided to give the iPhone another chance. Maybe it was just bad timing. Again, there's not as many Global Star satellites as there are Iridium. So I gave it another chance and it did work here. It struggled a little bit, but it did work eventually. So they all worked in the mouth of the canyon. All right, let's head into the narrower part of Annie's Canyon. I don't have high hopes that anything will work in here. I do know that GPS works in here, especially multiband. You're able to track yourself through here so you can receive signals from a satellite. Let's see if we're able to send signals to a satellite. All right, let's start with the iPhone. First thing it needs to do is get the GPS fix. It needs to find our position so it can broadcast that along with our SOS call. And I gave it some time here and moved around a bit. I could not get a GPS position here. So that's the non-starter. It's not gonna send an SOS call if it can't find our position. So this did not work. All right, let's try the Pixel 9. This stalled just like the iPhone did on getting a GPS fix. I think that's what it's doing. It never got off this getting ready to send screen after about 10 minutes. So it looks like it's not working. Uh, can't get a GPS fix, so it's not sending out an SOS call. All right, let's try the old reliable Garmin inReach Mini 2, trying to send a message. I sat here with it for about 10 minutes and it also did not send from the canyon down here. So they all failed within the canyon, at least in this part of it, but it did work in the mouth of the canyon and there have been rescues using the iPhone satellite SOS from canyons in Utah that look pretty intense. So it can work, you should obviously always try it, but if you're in a spot like this, you might just be out of luck. What you should know is that each one of these satellite systems has a different footprint on the Earth. Iridium has 100% global coverage. Apple uses Global Star and they're supported in a bunch of countries around the world, but not everywhere. Right now, the Pixel 9 has a footprint in the continental US, but that will probably change in the future too. As of me making this video in August 2024, the Pixel 9 only has satellite SOS. There's no just regular text messaging over satellite unlike what's been announced for Apple with iOS 18, where iPhone 14, 15, and 16 will be able to do just regular text messages from the backcountry, which obviously is incredibly helpful to maybe prevent having to hit SOS. Also, whether you have to pay for a rescue from the backcountry using your Pixel 9, it depends on a lot of different factors. I have videos on that you can check out. Garmin Response are the people that will answer your SOS call on the Pixel 9. And I asked if they are offering insurance for Pixel 9 users. And they said any device that's supported by Garmin Response is eligible for Garmin Search and Rescue Insurance. And you can buy that on their website. And pretty soon there'll be even more options for messaging via satellite in the backcountry, also for paying for a potential rescue in the backcountry. As soon as those drop, I will share them with you. Subscribe if you don't already. And thank you to everyone who supports this channel, allows me to buy devices like this and test them without having to be beholden to a company and be completely independent. Any questions, leave me a comment under the video and uh, stay safe. I'll see you out on the trails.